You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. We present The Apple of His Eye by Trisha Brecher with... Lucy Ailey Parker, Paul Francis, and Karen Singer. I cried. Joanne cried. Even the twins cried. But you got over it. Doesn't everyone? How long before you felt like your old self? A 15-year-old virgin? Look at me. Do I look fresh as a daisy to you? You look like you need a rest. Detective Inspector, C could we take a break? Detective Sergeant, I would like to proceed. Mrs Steele, did you want your husband to leave? I thought about it. How hard? Every day. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. For 50 years. Not 50 years. 40? Creeps up on you, darling. You live with anyone? I mean, besides your mum and dad. I have maintained a number of healthy relationships. I'm sure she does have a past. And I found out that when it starts to go wrong, you are better off getting out. Like cutting out of a ruka, lancing a boil. They won't thank you for staying. Is that right? Pity is a disease. It kills the doctor. Who said that? Normally Voltaire or someone. Dorothy Parker. Someone you might know, Simon Cowell. You got married when you were 17. I wasn't at the duff or anything. If only. Well, you must have been happy once, or something close. I was. Davy Thunder had just left Brenda. His manager had this tour planned, wanted all the boys under one roof. He was like grooming them, I suppose you'd call it. Not in a mucky way. Although maybe. Simpler times. People kept their mouths shut. Davy never said a word. Didn't even leave a note. First Brenda knew he was up at Glasgow Empire. We saw him on the telly. So Ken seemed like a good catch. He was. In his way. How many girls get a ring on their finger after their first kiss? I felt... Beautiful. Well, pretty. Pretty enough. And it was a proper white wedding. No embarrassing photos and no angry dad. His mother wasn't keen, though. Pulling faces in the background. She stayed at home. Thought her little prince was saddling himself with some common tart. Is that what she said? She didn't have to. After Hammersmith's Palais, Ken started calling for me once a week. Saturday afternoon drives in his Hillman Minx. Royal Tunbridge Wells and Canterbury. Dover Castle and Deal. We had a lovely cream tea at the Pantiles, listening to the band playing tunes from the Boer War. You can't beat a good brass band. <laughs> On my birthday, Ken bought me a pewter pendant of St Thomas a Beckett. Will no one rid me of this turbulent priest? Then he invited me to Sunday dinner. Told me not to mind his granddad staring. Never mentioned the dirty looks I'd get from his mother. I don't think he ever realised what an old bag she was. Maybe because he was an old git himself. You're calling your husband an old git? She was a bag and he was a git. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack Spratt would eat no fat, his wife would eat no lean. She cooked mutton, but it was begging for mercy. Did a lovely roast potato though, I'll give her credit for that. No idea how she'd get the outside so crisp and the inside so fluffy. Double cooking, three times if you're lucky. Did a load of petit pois. There was me trying to pick them up on a fork, flying everywhere, ended up spearing them one by one. So your Kenneth's intended? Sipping away on her gravy with this big silver spoon. And what do I say? Yes, he hadn't even asked, not even close to one knee. Never had a girl round before, hence the Sunday roast. So you were married? Within three months. Brenda was so jealous. For a week or two. Until she met Tommy Fantoni. I know, one of those names you couldn't make up. And he was only a drummer. Had a motorbike, though. 
Describe your movements after your husband left the house. I didn't move. I stayed on the settee watching the Olympics. Can you remind us what else happened in the opening ceremony? I fell asleep, I'm afraid. I heard it was smashing, though. And what time did you go to bed? Eleven. Like I said last time, you weren't worried about your husband still being out. It was only last orders. You weren't alarmed when he wasn't home by midnight. I was fast asleep. When did you notice your husband was not by your side in bed? We slept separately. There's no mention of that. It was private. A lot of things used to be private. How long were you and your husband sleeping separately? Since 1963. We'd been living in his mother's house and then she died. Stress of putting up with me, I suppose. So your relationship was not sexual? Like I said, once a month. Time for a baby. Easier once he moved into her bed. I mean, it was a double. But the rest of the time you were not... Close. What's close? You're living with a man, listening to those bedroom noises and bathroom noises. I heard a woman say that in a Western one. When did you... Stop trying for a baby? <laughs> oh, rot me. Pain never goes away. People stop asking when you turn 40. You think that's going to be a blessing and then you realise they're not asking because it's never going to happen. Then you want them to ask. You want them to stop being afraid of mentioning babies and they mention babies and you burst into tears. Did you blame your husband? Was it his fault you couldn't have children? Did a doctor ever say... They didn't do all that back then. You were barren and he was a jaffer. You never thought of trying with another man? I'm sorry, I find this all very undignified. Do you need a break, Yvonne? I'd like to talk to my daughter, please. She must be going out of her mind. Interview suspended. Suspect leaving the room at 3.30pm. Suspect? Interview recommenced at 3.31pm. We are obliged to investigate a range of possibilities, Mrs Steele. Who else have you interviewed? I am not at liberty to discuss that. Suspect! So you're not arresting me? I can get a cup of tea? You are here voluntarily, helping with inquiries, as the police officers should have explained. That's exactly what they said. I wondered if it was meant something more sinister. Where's Joanne? Where you left her. Hopefully with a cup of tea and a biscuit. We've got jammy dodges. But I've got to come back. You're invited to finish the interview. Just so we can get things straight. I'm not under arrest. You're free to go. These biscuits. Definitely jammy dodgers. I'm a policeman. I just need to see she's all right. I'll get an officer to escort you. Interview suspended. Mrs. Steele leaving the room at 3.32 p.m. Jammy Dodgers. She's talking, right? Little tiddlers in a boy bag. She trusts me. And she doesn't trust me. She's got a lot of respect for you. Respect. But she likes me. Yo, git. Years of experience. What do you know about boy bands? There's always a little one that girls feel sorry for. Come in. This way, Mrs. Steele. She's gone. Because of the kids. I normally pick them up, you see. Interview recommenced at 3.33pm. Mrs. Yvonne Marie Steele back in the room with Detective Sergeant Gray and Detective Inspector James. Please sit down, Mrs. Steele. I mean, didn't have to work in my day. You were supposed to be at home taking care of the kids. I haven't got any. Married to the job. Is it very exciting? Like in the Sweeney? You're going down. We have the Police and Criminal Evidence Act these days. Not allowed to call women birds or oh, crumpet. I don't mind what they call me, as long as they let me do my job. Very sensible. You don't be wasting your time on fighting, losing battles. Where were we? Trying with another man, yes. I sometimes thought about trying with another man. Every day I thought about trying with another man. But I work in a charity shop. Any idea how many eligible bachelors come in? They don't have to be a bachelor. True. 
Seeing as I'd be playing away. But you never... Wanting and doing are two very different things, Detective Inspector. Imagine if every crime writer was banged up for the things they'd written about. There'd be nothing left in W.H. Smith's. <laughs> I loved Ken. According to my bond, no more nor less. Cordelia, King Lear. Oh, you know your classics. People bring in all these books. You see the same old has-beens everywhere. A conveyor belt of charity shop classics. The F Plan Diet. That Fifty Shades makes plenty of appearances. Fifty Shades? Mucky little volume, apparently. She likes getting tied up. Well, you want a big, strong man sometimes. A man who knows what he's doing. Who knows what he wants. Decisive. Well, I'll have to think about that. Forensics are in, ma'am. There's been a development, Detective Sergeant. Sit tight, Mrs. Steele. Detective Inspector James leaving the room. Interview suspended, 3.36pm. What's happened? We're working on a number of cases. They've found something. A development? That's what it means, right? Sometimes. Terrible time of year, December. Sea must be so cold. Have you ever been to Dimchurch? We're more Camber Sands. We? Mum and me. Still going strong. 84. Wants to go to Benidorm this year. Heard they've got those mobility scooters. Hundreds of them. Joanne took the kids last year. Like Brand's Atch at five miles an hour. Ken wouldn't leave the country. Gets these panic attacks. Well, that's not in the file either. Plenty not in the file. We were happy, you know, for a while. Not so as you'd notice on him, but I was. Content. Big house on the common. Didn't mind the cooking and cleaning. Liked having little chores. Made me feel useful. Like having him come home the same time every day to see the place sparkling. During the old shake and vac. We had all this mahogany from old Mrs. Steele. Polished up lovely. All to all axminster carpet and heirloom, apparently. I was in my own little museum. The line was easier to keep. So I'm told. Do you like rice pudding? I love rice pudding. I used to make him rice pudding every night. The old-fashioned way, stirring it up in a saucepan with milk and cream. I did nutmeg at the last minute to make a crust. Cool. Then he tells me he prefers it out of a tin. On our first anniversary. Same day as my birthday. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Loved his tin spaghetti too. Brenda said it was better fresh. Well, Tommy Fantoni said it was better fresh. You can put parmesan cheese on it, sun-dried tomatoes and olive oil. Ken said that was for earwax. So, Brenda and Tommy... Knocked about for a couple of years. He became a milkman. Ended up getting the sack. She always kept his lighter, though. He'd had it engraved, B.F. Brenda Fantoni? He was always a chancer. She cried over him for a couple of months. Started coming over to my house at lunchtime, playing all his records. We had a wind-up gramophone, another relic from the age of steam. Then Ken came home for lunch one day, saw us jiving in our stockings, I mean, in our bare feet, so as not to ruin the Axminster. Said the place stank like a tart's boudoir. Brenda's tweed missed by Launthric. I see it sometimes in the shop. People clearing out their mum's stuff. All those bottles half full with amber. I still like Brute 33. Splash it all over. <laughs> Ken always wore this cologne after his shave. Just a dab from the First World War. Pine tree and ambergris. That's whale sick. I'd like to see that in the old Spice advert. <laughs> I used to give him sandwiches in a little box. Cheese and tomato, spam and pickle, tongue and mustard. He said they got soggy. So he started coming home for a bowl of soup. Heinz Malagatawny. With Jacob's cream crackers, unbuttered, so he could break them into the bowl. Or I could break them into the bowl. Boring. <laughs>